You mentioned the first cross. Can you dig into that a little bit? No pun intended. Can you dig into that a little bit more? Yeah. Can I can I announce some of these discoveries and give people please. a little more background on it before yes, I please. discuss that? Um, yes. So in my obsession, and I want to, I'll call it that, my obsession over understanding lost civilizations in the ancient world, my focus, though, of that obsession, besides ancient sites around the world, was ancient Sumer the ancient Sumerians, and understanding the different legacies that were left behind from the Sumerians, the Akkadians, the Assyrians, and the Babylonians. I think that's greatly lost sometimes with people, that one region of Iraq, and that's not even all the groups that have been there. We can talk about the Chaldeans and, and Scythians and others, right? But let's just for a time period, imagine imagine a region where you have all of these groups there and there's all this confusion but there's an original group that's truly ancient something truly ancient and when i started looking to like the excavations of shrupak which was the last sumerian city mentioned in all the tablets with this last sumerian king known as untapishtim who later became zayasudra you find out that that story of his story in the tablets like the Atrahasis, is the story that eventually became the biblical Noah. Okay? Mm. And the original story that comes from these tablets, again, as part of this discovery that I'm building up to, it, it had this whole section where the very last Sumerian king, the son of Ubar Tutu, the very last city of this ancient, mysterious time period that seems to predate everything, a great catastrophe is told to them that's coming that is going to destroy everyone. And this Noah figure, we're going to call him Noah just from now on so there's no confusion. This last Sumerian king and priest, and that's what he was, is warned by his patron god, Enki, that there's this catastrophe and flood coming and that he has to preserve his family, not every, two of every animal of every kind, but his family bloodline for that, so that for future generations. And he survives this catastrophe and the tablets fracture off and we never find out what happens though after him and his family land and survive this catastrophe in this massive boat, which is truly is true. They truly built some kind of an incredibly massive cedar, cedar logged craft with bitumen to seal the whole thing. It's all described in the Epic of Gilgamesh, Atrahasis, and Legend of Utsub mm. Itsubar. Point is though, Researchers like me and many, many others around the world were stuck at that spot because there was no other tablets that that told us what happened to the story. It they landed there, and the sons of Noah, the whole story just fractured off because the, the, the ancient gods of Sumer lowered down and talked to them and all these things, but nobody knew what happened up until about a year ago when I uncovered a series of archaeological discoveries that were just being made. Some of them were so new, Alex, they mm -hmm. were only discovered in 2017. Wow. And so, in, for instance, so many people talk about Gobekli Tepe, but that was discovered in 1944. We're, we're talking, like, imagine the, the new kid in the block that nobody's ever heard of. That would be the, what I've coined the Ararat Civilization. It is a series of archaeological discoveries around Lake Vaughan in eastern Turkey that the archaeological community, um, whether it's the uh, University of Istanbul, University of Vaughan, or any of these universities that are in there making those archaeological excavations, they have no idea what they've found. Mm -hmm. They believe that it's part of the wrong civilization by eight to 10,000 years or more. Okay. And you can see that by the primitive work that's on top. So when I saw these, these discoveries that were being made underwater, under Lake Vaughn, and about and these ancient temples, with what you like you mentioned, as the discoveries grew, and I started seeing symbols within them and how it played around to all the civilizations, these mysterious civilizations around the world, whether it's Bolivia or Peru or even Egypt. I realized I had stumbled upon something absolutely massive. And as I started to uncover it more, I started to realize it may be like this missing link to everything.
the missing link to pre-religion, and the missing link to all of our understanding and origins of these lost civilizations. And and that discovery got a lot of is getting a, a lot of excitement, and it's just being launched into a whole new aspect right now. And I want to announce that because of that, those set of discoveries, I have mm-hmm. formed my own company called Ionis Legacy after the most sacred site, Ionis, and I have a team of experts around the world such as Billy Billy Carson, who you just had on, um, as well as Paul Wallace, Brian Forrester, and uh, several others I can't mention yet. But along with me, we're going to be making a film to, to change all of history, going to these sites, documenting these discoveries before the world even knows about them, and then connecting them from Turkey all the way to Bolivia, and then connecting that lost narrative around the world. And I truly want to tell people that this is a very exciting project and film to be part of, but we need help from everyone else, everyone that's listening. If you want to, if we want to see some a, a film, a project like that ex- to succeed, we really need people's help. So we're looking, we're doing some crowd funding right now. And um, I want people to check out the website, thestageoftime.com. So you can see all about that film project and being, being a part of that to truly change history and get on the ground in all these locations and make a film that that truly changes the world. So that's what we're a part of doing. And these, these archeological discoveries has have blossomed into, um, into truly being um, what I believe is the missing link and is going to be part of my entire career and focus probably the rest of my life, to be honest, in trying to connect that those missing pieces uh, around the world. And that's what gets back into what you just mentioned was again, the significance of these discoveries and how, Temples like Ionis carved into, into andesite, one of the mm-hmm. hardest stones on earth, which is how you know it's truly ancient, mm-hmm. as well as basalt, another very, very hard stone. And by the way, if anybody wants to know how hard those are, andesite is a seven on the most hardness scale. The most hardness scale goes from a one to a 10, 10 being the hardest possible diamond. Andesite is a seven on that scale with basalt being a six to a seven. So to carve something like that with these type of symbols, it would be almost literally impossible with our understanding of these cultures, proving that they're truly ancient. And in those, in that andesite at Mm -hmm. Ionis and other sites with other symbols, we find the very first cross, I believe that's ever existed on earth with a completely different meaning. The religion eventually took to it. And that has been something that, has launched a lot of excitement around the world. And I want to, we can talk about that and some of the connections it has to everything, but um, these discoveries are going to truly change our understanding of who we are in the future. To watch the full video, click on the link below and don't forget to subscribe.